Speakers Bank Podcast. Our voices, our views. Hello everybody, my name is Storm Robbins and today's topic is all about independence. Joining me today is my co-host Catherine. Hi. And my two guests are Lynn and Kim. And they are from Vic Uni. Could you please explain to the audience what course you're doing at the moment at Vic Uni? So the course that we're doing is the Dual Diploma in Community Services and Community Development. And we're currently um, doing our work, first work placement for the year. Um, for uh, the first work placement, um, I suppose it's more of a community development aspect. Uh, and we've got three projects to do. Today, we've been thrown into a fourth project. That oh, we, look out. We, yeah, that we didn't know about, so we can only hope for the best. Oh, you'll be fine. <laughs> Just make sure there's no sharks in the deep end. <laughs> yeah. So Storm and Catherine, I wanted to ask you just a few questions. Mm -hmm. So what does independence mean to you? Independence is, you can do so much on your own independently without any support. So I can catch public transport during the day with no problems and do whatever I do, you know, get myself places. Um, Independence is, yeah. Independence for me is a lot of things. Uh, number one is accepting yourself for who you are. Yeah. Loving yourself and accepting the disability for what it is, but also understanding how to improve your disability so it doesn't make it sound like it's downhill, it's only uphill. Mm. So that's what living independent means. And showing, and also adding to it, um, finding the what right support that caters for your needs, basically. So ever since I'm a person that never gives up, I always explore different things. Um, so I started art life. So I'm independent. Get myself to art life, doing ceramics, which is very great. I do a little bit of um, helping some parents in the local area, which I absolutely love. And um, yeah, and just. I know this is going to sound strange, but I think independence also means the ability to empower other people who lack independence. Yes. So if you're showing you have, you have special needs, but you have independence it will also rub off to other people that they can also be independent as well. And what are some of the barriers you feel like you faced um, in order to become independent? Um, for me, it's more about understanding my disability and what it, it requires day by day. For example, um, with my disability, with cerebral palsy, I have difficulty with my, with my mobility. <laughs> So I have to have crutches or wheelchairs to get me around the community. And that's some of the barriers I face. For example, if I was at a coffee shop and I wanted to have coffee, if there's a step there, I can't get to it. So I miss out on my coffee. So having that social society understand what my disability is and how to cater for it is very, very important for my everyday needs. For me, going to some events, alone is a barrier because I struggle with more of the information and knowing where I am and so that's right I'm still independent but mostly at night I'm not that independent without being with someone. So do you think um, having some help or assistance allows you to be more independent, but it's for really small sort of little things, but that offers you greater independence. Yes. And do you believe that the NDIS has been able to assist you to become more independent? And if so, how? Well, Lynn, I'm not really sure at the moment because mm -hmm. I'm still in the process of getting onto the NDIS, okay. but from what I've seen, 
And from what my report has said coming back to me, because it's been approved, okay. it looks like it's going to have an impact. Yeah. Whether or not it's going to help me with um, keeping my body nice and fit and healthy, that's going to be up to me, because there's certain little um, clauses in the contract that says that they can fund certain things yeah. that your disability uh, re requires, mm -hmm. and then there's other things that they can't fund. So it's a horses for courses type yeah. thing. So yeah. you've really got to know which which ones are they, they can fund and which ones they can't. Yeah, with me, I've got the I I got the NDIS package for me to move it out of home so I'll get support for that. I'll also and I've also got the support of some um, activities I do so that helps pay for that and mingle with other people. And yeah, so the NEOS will help a long way for me to be more independent on my own. Did you both believe that the process to getting your NDIS package, mm. did you think it was an easy process? No, it, it, was, it was so it was difficult. Hard, yeah. It was very, very hard. Um, I'll be honest with you, if I did not have the support from my work in Mercy, doctors and physios, I wouldn't be able to get on the NDIS. Yeah. Because there's not enough support networks in place mm. like, that I believe at the moment that's helping you get the evidence that you need. Yeah. Because it's more than just about getting a physio approval. You need doctors, you need medical histories. You need, um, you know, clearances from other organisations as well to yeah. say that this person is a good person and this person will do his best with the funding that he needs and the reasons why. So the, the other problem is with NIS is you can prove that you have a disability, but then you've got to prove it in, in, into words. That, which is hard. Which is harder. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, to get any type of really good funding, you need to make your story as sad and as heartbroken as possible. You've got to saturate to get a little it. bit. You've got to, um, yeah, pretty much. Like, I can't, like, you got to, um, I can't just say I'm so independent, I, I can do this, 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 because if you say that, then you're not going to get that. So there, yeah. You're not going to get it. So there is a massive grey area in the how, mm -hmm. in how you word it. And for anyone who is watching this podcast at the moment, I strongly recommend that you have some very, very good writers on board, because yeah. it's not how you're going to get the funding, it's the, the way the words are written. So that, you'll that is the best way to get the maximum benefit of your NDIS funding. I, I know there's some carers out there that think, oh, but gee, that's sort of downgrading my son or daughter. It's not, because long term, your daughter or your son or whoever has a disability will benefit from the services that are given from the NDIS. But you have to make it sound like you really, really need it. Who did you seek for your... Uh, to write your um, your NDIS yes. applications. Okay, um, so I went through Brotherhood of St. Lawrence. Okay. Uh, because I asked for your mercy from day one mm -hmm. because I was foreshadowing that this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So I asked them, even before I went on the NDIS, yeah. that what are the processes, what are the cons, mm -hmm. what are the and pros of doing it. Yeah. And they said Brotherhood of St. Lawrence. And I said, yep, yeah, right, yeah. Then I asked them, because they're medical professionals and they know what my disability is to write down some key points, sure. key dot points and stuff like that, mm -hmm. rather than me trying to write down my own self. self mm -hmm. They're the ones with the experts, they're the ones with the knowledge and they know how to write it down to make it sound really, really bad. So you'd recommend them if somebody was looking Absolutely. to get a package? Absolutely. Or, or go to your local coordinator, area coordinator which you'll find in their different um, like companies that you're involved in. Oh, okay. And you speak to their coordinator and they'll be able to that's, assist that's you. That's right. Yeah. But for me, the best thing to do is talk to your doctor, talk to your uh, people that are in charge of your life first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's some good advice. Okay. okay. Do you believe your parents think you're responsible, Anna? 
to make your own decisions? Mm, um, certain things, uh, for example, money. Uh, I don't think I'm confident with money enough mm -hmm. to, to do that sort of thing. For me, if I see something I like, I just buy. I don't, <laughs> I don't think about, oh, should I save that extra 10 or 20? Because I'm not used to it because my mum's done all the savings, she's done all that sort of stuff. But that's because I'm not, I haven't been exposed to what a budget really looks like because everything's done for me. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a, uh, actions equal consequences. So Absolutely. that's a consequence of, of me not teaching myself. Well, not knowing that you not have knowing, to. Yeah. Not knowing that, oh, exactly. I might need that exactly. in the future. Exactly. So. Yes, my mum is very supportive. And and um, she allows me, she does allow me to make some decisions, but she kind of just gives a bit more of a guidance to make sure I know that I'm making the right decision. Mm -hmm. You know, positive. Like, yeah, and, and, and that's exactly that's the same as, as my mum yeah. too. My mum does the same thing. She's very supportive in what I want to do. Um, but she will put me in line and just say, okay, you're going to do this. Again, actions equal consequences. Mm -hmm. So she knows every decision she makes is for my best interest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not like she's downgrading me or trying to hurt me. Yeah. It's because she's lived through that experience. Yes. And there's certain things in a disability person's life that we that we haven't experienced because we've been you need that shielded level of from. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just to make sure you know. That's right. So they allow you to have responsibility, but yeah. they still sort of watch over, yeah. watch over you to make sure that you know there's not really bad effects from yeah, you yeah, just right. being responsible. Which is great. Hmm. How do you feel about? Uh, sorry, how do your parents feel about you wanting to move out? For me, it's a bit of a personal uh, thing. Um, I have this grand idea about moving out. Like, for me, the first part would be finding a partner to move out. I don't like to live independently because I'm a bit of a chatterboxer. Mm -hmm. I need like company. Yeah, mm -hmm. I need company, and I need a, a friend as well, mm -hmm. um, a life partner to move out with. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there's some people with special needs that are comfortable with that, but it's a, it's a preference thing. Mm -hmm. So until I find a partner and until I'm, I'm good with my financial things. Sometimes we never get there, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, then, yeah, I won't be moving out. Um, I'll, I will be moving out when the time comes. Mm -hmm. and my mum my said to me this, you'll know when the time comes when you move out. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. That's nice to know you've got a support. So. Yeah. They, my parents know that I'm ready, mm -hmm. and um, I'm just at the process now that I've kind of found a couple of people I'm going to move in, friends I want to move in with, and we're still in the process of I mean looking for houses, so that it takes time, and um, but saying that it's you know. There's nothing stopping you, mm -hmm. but there's always the right way that any parent will want to meet people that is mm -hmm. going to be, you know, just so Definitely. you're safe and, which is great. And um, yeah, but they're saying, you know, um, that's a hard question. <laughs> um, yeah. They're happy for they're you happy to move for out. Me. They're happy for they're you to move out and yeah. that you've obviously got a close enough bond so yeah. they feel like you can make some decisions I can make some with decisions. them just a little bit away. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Which is good. So I'm very grateful because I'll just give you a little bit of a... So people in our shoes, and it happens, that have more needs, but when you say, yes, I want to move out, you're ready, whatever, it's understandable that people with disabilities don't mix well with the able, like the able don't really want you to move mm -hmm. in because they're just scared what they are in for. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with us. Mm -hmm. We don't want them to mother you. But, yeah. Um, you want to be seen as an equal. Equal, equal. exactly, and that's important. And yeah. it's, always, it's always difficult in this world that we live in to be 
equal with everybody. We, we, we struggle constantly every day um, to find that medium between, okay, do I feel like I'm wanted here or do I feel like I'm just a burden? And it's very, very difficult. I know it's very raw and very um, heartbreaking, but mm. I just want to tell the viewers out there the absolute truth. Mm. Because that's what this podcast is. It's breaking down barriers and understanding what a person with a disability really feels like. Yeah. Um, like, let's face it, everybody has their issues. Like, no one's perfect. No. Whether they have a disability or no disability. But everybody should be treated equal, no difficulty. I think, I think you made perfect sense. You're absolutely right. Um, what does living independently look like to you? Living independently is when you, when you feel like your mental health and your physical health are 100%. When you feel like if thing goes, if thing goes wrong, um, that you've got support and people around you that can help you through the processes that you find challenging. Mm -hmm. But also, um, living independently gives other people with disabilities hope that they can do it too. So it creates an empowerment to each and every one of us in the community to say, oh, if he can do it or she can do it, I can do it too. Yeah. So and I think that's a great attitude. I think it's... What does yeah. I think it's going to be great because I'm quite independent already. Mm -hmm. So moving out will be a challenge and it is a challenge for everybody. Mm -hmm. And now I've got the funding, I'll be able to do so much with the support mm -hmm. I'll get. Like, I might, the, might, when I move out, I'll probably get a cleaner mm -hmm. that'll come fortnightly. And the NDIS will pay for that. And I'll probably get an OT assessment, which I'm funded for as well, which will be just to see what I can do around the house. But I'll definitely pass that. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, whatever. And I'll also probably get a support worker that will take me shopping, and yeah. So that that's independence to you, yeah. Like with all of those, yeah. Things I think you've got. And sometimes time. with some people, the support worker will be with you, say for a year, and you may not need it anymore. Mm -hmm. You're on your, you know, you're on your own because you're able to do it on your own. Because I know some people that are like similar to me have moved out of home and they don't need support anymore. Oh, okay. So if your circumstances change, like you move out of home, mm. your NDIS package, is that able to be changed around to assist you with so other things? Yeah, it, so it can increase. Okay. It can. what your needs are. Okay. It can, but what you'll need to do is, and this is very important for the viewers watching this, you will need to contact your coordinator or your plan manager mm -hmm say, look, I have a different living situation or my disability has gotten worse, we need to do a soft review of the plan. A soft review? Yeah. Yes, a soft review. See how things are going. And that's where you'll sit down with your coordinator, mm -hmm. who's the one that ripped your plan in the first place, yeah. and they will make the appropriate changes based on what your needs are at the time. But, but you will get an opportunity to change your plan once yearly. So, oh, that's good. So it's very flexible. Yeah. Very flexible. That is good. And I suppose it gives you more independence knowing that the plan is flexible. Yes. So as your needs change, yes. the plan can change yes. as well. And that's, and that's a lot of, um, there's a lot of misconception that once you've got a plan, it's locked in. You can't mm -hmm. change it for a few years. Yeah. You can change it on the fly as you go on. The, it's just the process is... Got to, got to be in within reason and got to fit within their criteria mm -hmm. of is this a realistic goal? Can this be achieved? Mm -hmm. so. yeah. Say it well. Uh, just before we wrap things up, I just want to apologise to the viewers that some of the questions we did not have any facts or statistics to back it up. Uh, we will next time, but uh, please be aware of that. Yeah. So. This is Storm Robbins and Catherine signing off. I want to thank you to Kim and Lynn for joining us today.
Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.